Today I'm going to show you how I can play PC games in my living room using my computer way down here in the basement. I'm Enterprise, let's go! As a full-time content creator, streamer, and music teacher, I spend a lot of time here. Like, in this place. Now, I love this place, okay? But I spend a lot of time here. And when I'm not streaming a game or teaching a lesson, I wanna be able to relax in a different environment. So I needed to find a way to play PC games in the living room. So I did what most people would do build another PC. Now fortunately, I have a lot of hardware. I have a lot of computers and I have a computer built from old components. So it's like my gaming PC from 2015 is basically what's upstairs. But we have a 4K TV and that can definitely not push any modern 4K titles. So my plan this year was to buy another GPU for the living room. But uh, we all know that that's impossible. Trying to buy a GPU right now is really, really difficult. The only reason we have a 3090 in this computer right here is because one of my amazing viewers bought one and sent it to me. There's a video all about it. Link in the description below. I'm gonna show you the products I bought to get my gaming PC set up in the living room without any compromises when it comes to audio, video, or latency. Now there's a lot of ways that you can get one computer's audio and video to another room. I tried streaming solutions, I hated them. They didn't work. So when the streaming solution does not work, you only have one answer. Go wired, baby. Let's take a look at the gear I'm using to make this happen. One humongous USB cable. I tried using a USB 2 cable, didn't work for me. So I'm using a 65 foot USB 3 extension cable. Uh, it's got this added power in case the device won't power up. Haven't needed that yet, but you know, it's nice to have. Step two, humongous HDMI cable. Look at this thing, look at, look, look at this. I'm using a 75 foot fiber optic HDMI cable. This is my first time using a fiber optic HDMI cable. Looks like it comes in significantly longer lengths. Uh, traditionally, the regular HDMI cable starts to have problems after about 75 feet or so. And so far, it's working out. Step three, you gotta have something to put them on the wall. You know, you need something to get the cables nicely managed. Clip them up. So I got a whole bunch of clips. And now I got a powered hub. Let's talk about why this is a powered USB hub. What I love about this hub is it has individual power buttons for every port. This means I can leave everything plugged in upstairs and when I'm not using it, turn off the port so I don't have to unplug anything and my computer does not detect any unnecessary devices. All right, so here's the HDMI and USB cable. I've got them going across the floor here up the stairway, all the way up to the ceiling, around the corner, and down the hall, across into the living room, down the molding, and then it connects up to the TV and over to the USB hub. Because I have a PC already in this room, I keep the hub for the living room PC and the hub for the basement PC side by side. That way it's really easy for me to unplug my keyboard, mouse, and headphones between the two devices. Just unplug everything from this white plug, put them all into this black plug, and turn them on. And I'm good to go. Let's go over what we have so far. We have one humongous HDMI cable to cover both audio and video. I've got one humongous USB cable to control the computer, have my peripherals, my headphones, my keyboard, mouse, controller, whatever. But we haven't actually talked about what devices I'm using on the couch. Because if anyone out there's tried to use a keyboard and a mouse on a couch on your lap, it can be a little awkward. 
I've made DIY versions myself over the years using like wooden boards and it can work, but it's definitely weird. The wooden boards always too heavy or too big. Here's what I ended up getting and I actually really like it. This thing, the Corsair K63. It's all like plastic, but it has this nice little rubber wrist rest, good size mouse pad. It's got padding on the bottom of it. And what's really cool is this keyboard just clicks out. So if I ever needed a wireless mechanical keyboard, I can just click it out and then go. And because it only has one color, it doesn't use too much power. It actually lasts a pretty long time, which is awesome. So I'm using this keyboard. And then I just picked up this really inexpensive Razer wireless mouse. Simple, simple gaming mouse. It works less than 40 bucks, you know? We're good. And for headphones, I'm using the Astro A50s. Now, I don't like these headphones. Let's talk about it. The first elephant in the room. They are way too expensive, way too much. Uh, don't, don't buy these. If you're looking for some wireless gaming headphones, don't buy the Astro A50s. They're way too much money. Every time there's an update, they don't work and you have to like reset the headphone. The connectivity is weird. I bought them because they have a base station that can take USB audio in and 3.5 millimeter audio in. I thought I could use the USB to get game audio in and then use the 3.5 millimeter to get my mixer in from all my instruments and all my mics. The reality is inside the headphones, they're using some kind of different audio channel for those two things. So the USB audio is great, really fast, low latency and beautiful. And the 3.5 millimeter plug sounds like garbage. Very unhappy with how that purchase went but it's been way too long and I can't return them. So after many, many months of doing nothing, they have a use once again in my living room via the basement. PC gaming setup. <coughs> now trying to manage lots of different screens and peripherals on one PC can be a bit awkward and a little uh, trying. So I have some tips for you. We're gonna call these Ender Tech Tips. Don't, don't sue us, Linus. Tech tip number one. You're gonna to wanna to turn off every other monitor except for the one in your living room. I'll show you how. On your desktop, you wanna right click and go to your control panel. For me, it's the NVIDIA control panel. If you use AMD, it's gonna be called something else. Open it up. Go to your uh, setup multiple displays. And you're gonna wanna uncheck anything that's not your main screen. Right now, it's not plugged in. So we're viewing my main gaming screen and the uh, stream duplicate and then my side monitor. So you wanna unclick everything that's not the main display. And what that'll do is that will automatically save this as a new profile. It's actually pretty cool. It'll save it so that when you plug in that new display, it remembers, hey, that guy doesn't want everything else on, and it will turn off all the other screens and only have that one screen on. Tech tip number two, don't leave any unnecessary USB devices plugged in from upstairs. If you followed my uh, purchasing guide and got that USB hub with the individual on and off buttons, you can just turn off everything. But if you leave a random mouse plugged in or a random pair of headphones, Sometimes your computer will default to those or will even get confused when you boot a game if you have too many devices plugged in. So if you're like me, I got enough going on down here. I don't need my computer to be confused about what mouse I'm using. Tech tip number three. That's it, there's no more tech tips. This is super easy to do. When I'm streaming on Twitch, I work really hard. I'm always reading the chat, I'm on the drums, I'm yelling into the microphone, I'm running back to my desk, I'm running over to the keys. Like, I expel a lot of energy in my live streams. And when I'm done, I really just wanna relax. And sometimes I wanna play some video games that don't necessarily fit in to how my streaming content works. So for me, being able to just 
plug in one different monitor, walk upstairs and sit down and all of a sudden I'm playing The Witcher or I'm playing Forza or I'm in cyberpunk. No distraction is pretty amazing for me. It's like, I love gaming, you love gaming. And I love gaming so much, I made gaming my work. And now to make gaming just feel like a fun, relaxing activity, I need to get away and get down to the basics. Like when I was a kid, just me on the couch with a controller, having fun playing a video game. I got to give a humongous shout out to the crew over on Patreon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Patreon. Without getting into the details, Patreon's one of the most efficient ways that you can support your favorite content creator. I have a whole bunch of tiers, different ways for you to support, and all kinds of different perks, including behind the scenes video, captain's vlogs, special permissions in the Discord, and getting your name on screen like it is right now. Not only on my YouTube videos, but during my live Twitch streams. So thank you, Patreon. Um, I love you. If you want to know more about the Patreon, that link, once again, is in the description down below. I hope you liked this video. If you think I did a good job, please scroll down below and click that like, subscribe, and check that bell to get those notifications. Wait, do you check the bells? Do you check the bell? I don't think you do. Uh, just click the bell. Thanks. Did we get it? Are we good? Is that a wrap? Yeah, it's a wrap. We're good. Shut it down. Shut it down.